despite the anxiety, continuous anxiety and stress, the type of anxiety and stress you can cut with a knife, figuratively speaking, and I'm in while I'm here with my mother, I mean I'm in it continuously. Um, another huge benefit to staying here with my mom, even though it's on the slide, even though I'm just like, is that I can take my vitamins. I can take my mega food multivitamin, mega food D3, mega food um, B, B vitamins, you know. And, and my, um, my, my enzymes, that, that, whatever that is, enzymes, I think. But all of that and of course, six dollar drinks like this that I buy sometimes at, the, at a health food store, you know, when I'm in the shelter. But I bought this yesterday. It's real expensive, but it's turmeric, and that's a huge immune system builder, you know. While I'm staying with my mom, I can take all my vitamins, and even though I do overeat and gain weight, because I eat her junk food she buys full fat sour cream with the crab, the special cake crackers I should be eating, and, and she buys chocolate, and cheese, and but even despite the weight gain, and despite, um, I'm, I still am eating a lot healthier, I just ran out of my chlorella, chlorella, you know, is a huge, Toxin removal, you know, means to remove toxins from your body. I'm waiting for the day I get physically sick, you know. I'm under just an obscene amount of stress and anxiety. Like I told that woman in the shelter, the woman may or may not have convinced a lawyer to help me here. Oh, you're going to fight Mary when you're barely hanging on her. But I told her, you know, I, every word that comes out of my mother's mouth upsets me. I told her this when I was planning on coming back soon. And then I stayed longer. It's like I said, sometimes it's like, what's the lesser of two evils? Don't want to be here. Don't want to be in the shelter. And have no, no options coming forth in regards to finding a new place for me and where to live. What am I supposed to do? I don't know. You tell me. What am I supposed to do? I My female YouTube friend, the one who really, really gets it. Um, can't they help you find housing in the shelter? Yeah. But a room, probably not, you know. They can help me with the, one of those deals where they only take a third of your income, but it's just a room and I can't have all my rent. <laughs> You know, these flies are going to wind up laying eggs and my mom's going to have an infestation. I'm almost guarantee you. And that's going to send her over the edge. It's like I said, I'm saner than her and that sends me over the edge. Remember the thing with the toilet? That thing with the toilet became a huge stress factor in my mom's life and in mine. You know. But really, it only became one in mine because she was just going mad over it. I can't remember. I documented all that in videos. I can't remember it now, but I documented it. Oh. She, she, she saw her friend yesterday. And, and, uh, and she says to me, 
No, it says to me, oh, you don't have to worry about her. She's not going to report you. See, she said she saw you, and what I want to do is my business. Yeah. I don't care, Mom. She won't. She'll sit there and deny she gave Mary the letter when she did give Mary the letter. And Mary... And it, oh, what does it matter, though? She's my best friend. She, I, and that, that, she said, cares. Who cares about that 79? Yeah. You just summed up why I'm going mad here. Let me restate just for the universe itself, I suppose. I wasn't perfect with Joe, but... I wasn't even remotely close to what I am now. Don't you say anything bad about it. My mom said it right, right out loud out to me. Don't you say anything bad about it. But mom, she gave Mary that letter that I gave to her. Mom, why did you do that? Mary forced her to mom. She didn't carry that letter around with her. She came down here probably just because my bad luck. When Marion was cleaning your house, she just she came down here. Marion said that I put you that I caused you to go to the hospital. I remember you were calling her and everyone else and telling them all kinds of bad shit about me untrue shit, and, you know, so, Marianne didn't force her to get the letter, she would have had, this woman would have had to go back to her house, she would have had to say to Marianne, oh, I have a letter from her, and go and actually get it, okay, she thought she was doing you a favor, she believes, Marianne, that I'm the culprit, everything's my fault, that's what Marianne tells everybody, and they believe her. Everything's my fault. And I have to hear my mom. Don't you say anything bad about her. She's my friend. Deja vu. She would say the same thing about, about the aunt who was dying. Don't you say anything bad about her. She's she's dying. You know. Can't you just learn how to forgive, Laura? And don't upset the family. What am I, Mom? Oh, when I arrive at the airport and I get, I'm a little perturbed that I can't come stay with you like you promised I could, and I get, get, stop being so selfish, so-and-so's dying, don't upset the family. Yeah, don't upset the family, Mom, but what am I? I'm supposedly the human being on this planet who you love more than life itself, don't upset the family. I don't know what I'd do if anything happened to you, Laura. Don't upset the family. Don't you say anything bad about her. She's my friend. <laughs> she didn't have to give Mary that letter, Mom. If you remember, they all think I'm scum. Marion convinces everyone that I'm scum that I cause you sickness, that, that I don't love you, that I'm just after your money, that I'll bleed you dry if I'm given any opportunity to do so. Bleed you dry financially. But anyway, back to the flies. It's very bad when you have and if there's already too many flies in here, and it only takes one to lay eggs, and then there'll be an infestation. You can't spray of dogs, no. You don't go around spraying raid all over your house when you have animals. You come up with an alternate solution. I just killed a couple of flies when I got up to have my apple cider vinegar and spring water and and pepper spring water. My mom buys junk food. I had two cookies last night, delicious macadamia and chocolate junk pepper drums. And I just had one now. I also had Ezekiel flax bread with organic butter and the rest of my mom's cheese. You ate all my cheese. Yeah, mom, I ate all your cheese. So what? I brought it for lunch yesterday, and I, I had it now, but I also gave you back the, the $50 shorts, or however much they were that you bought for me. 
So what if I ate the cheese? Buy more. Can't you buy more after church? On I'm not going to church. So and so and so and so are coming to take me out. I you know. I hate these people you stay friends with, Mom. I can't stop you from being friends with them. I know they, I know they treat you badly, but I, I tell my mom outright, I'm like, Mom, you, I don't like these people. You don't even, you know, be friends with them. I mean, you be friends with whoever you want, but I don't have to hear about it. I don't want, I know their track record. They're going to say they'll take you out, and then they're not going to do it. They're going to say this and say that, and they're not going to do it. They, they, my mom would say to me, this time they're really going to pay me back. Remember the older thousands, and they, they did pay her back, and thankfully when she paid for my wisdom teeth to be removed, she wouldn't have been able to do that. They just happened to be paying her back, but now they don't. But they'll say it every month when I was living here. My mom will say, no, this time they're really going to do it, Mom. They're, Laura, they're really going to send me that $100. No, they're not, Mom. I'm tired of hearing it. And lo and behold, they didn't send it. Why did they say they were going to? The same reason they're saying now they're going to take you out, go out, or do it. And then, she, and then she's like, well, they could just come down here, yeah, whatever. I don't want to hear about them. If something bad happens, you know, then you can tell me about it. But other than that, all the petty little things that they say, well, you're going to do this and that, and, and you're going to go play miniature golf. They're, they talk big, Mom, and they, but they, they're not going to follow through. They're t big talkers who never follow through. Because with her friend, the other day she played miniature golf, and probably told them, and oh, we're going to do that. Yeah, they talk, baby. But my mom, someone can can not keep their promise 50 million times to her, and she'll still believe the next time that they're going to keep their promise. It's just bullshit. It's such bullshit. It's ridiculous. And I have to hear it. I have to hear it. Like I said, I was at shows, and we watched into, we didn't watch sitcoms. We watched intellectually stimulating DVDs or even shows like the X-Files we watched we, we talked about anything and everything and I remember he worked every day and I could sleep I went to bed early I would stop eating most nights by 9pm usually earlier than that and like I said I, at one point I was all the way down to 53 pounds I was eating all organic not, not cheating in the least little bit and, you know, and I returned to my mom's, and shortly afterwards I'm plunged right back into hell. The kind of hell where not only am I in hell, but not only am I going through everything with her, but I get to hear her telling her friends, and my psych and her psychologist, my psychologist says I'm not crazy, my psychologist says you shouldn't yell at me, my psychologist says you're the crazy one, you know, I know this guy just said all this crap, he sees her for a half hour and she sits there, everything's fine, she, she won't even tell the truth when she's feeling like she's losing her mind, I overheard her telling her friend, the same one who thought I was a monster, until my mom cleared, cleared up in this room, was actually willing to listen and thinks Mary's horrible, but, you know, when my mom was in the midst of her madness, she yells at me all the time. She'll be, I'll be fine if she just leaves. But then she doesn't know I'm eavesdropping. And then, and she's talking to someone who can't get her section or anything. A friend. And I heard her admit the truth. Mary, or Monica. I don't know what's wrong with me. I feel like I don't want to go back in the hospital. I feel like I'm going crazy. I mean, this is one. This pre-dementia. All the things like. And why do you think I'm scared about last night? She knows how to plug in that cell phone, the little cord, put it in the end. And she was, she's like, you must have, it must have settled overnight. Mom, it didn't settle overnight. I was able to do it instantly. You were able to do it just now when I told you to do it. You couldn't do it last night. Why? This is just like what was happening before you, the, you know, the calm before the storm, before you went crazy last time. You couldn't do the simplest things that you knew how to do couldn't even turn the stove on to the right. You turn one burner on and and put the pan on the other burner, you know? I mean, things like that. You, you, I 
not a happy camera. She couldn't do that cell phone last night. She knows how to do that. She's been doing it for over a week. She's had no problem. Now suddenly she can't do it. Suddenly. Suddenly she can't. And I made her do it today. I wasn't going to do it for her. She's like, well, you could, I asked you to help me last time. And then I said, well, you wouldn't have had a phone. I was going back to the shelter today. And she's like, oh, I would have had so-and-so to help me. I would have gone out to a friend. Mom, you know how to do that cell phone. You know how to plug it. It wouldn't work. It must have settled overnight. No, it didn't. No, it didn't.